we are so excited to show you our third and final game for the night. Um, and one thing that I think is really interesting about this tournament is that the games happen so late. This set of games is starting at 9.30 and going, these games are going to go till 10.30 and Scrabble is exhausting at the best of times when you start early in the morning and you reach your peak. But these players are definitely powering through right now as they reach the later hours of the day. We are ready to switch to the players. So moving and into James Donnelly and Hannah, Hannah Lieberman, sorry about that. <laughs> um, James is a bingo machine, as people have been saying in the chat. He was a youth player, and I watched him climb from this kid who just started playing Scrabble to a champion in three years. He learns bingos like nobody's business, and his board vision is always incredible. But Hannah yeah. is no one yeah. to scoff at either through many tournaments, and she's proven herself to be quite the valiant foe. I Yeah, I just want to take this point time to point out the really cute little note that she had on her rack before she started picking up her really unhappy tiles, which were... Uh, Basically, please don't judge me, Internet. And I can promise you, Hannah, it's we're not we're not judging you. We just saw those tiles. Nobody's gonna <laughs> judge you for those. That's just rough. And I love to see players making the most of their situation that they're on. Some people love the camera, some people hate it, and some people like to play little games with their audience. Um, always love to see it. And yeah, Hannah's going I to be going first here. I think that you know she did she did something really smart like exchanged almost immediately. I would have probably kept just the e instead of fe because the f is not a great bingo tile, um, and you know like putting that f back means like she's got more chances to hit the blanks, more chances to hit the s, and like the things that she really wants to see. But you know keeping fe still not bad. But what that does mean is that it creates this strange little situation for James because. He's got those one pointers again and no bingo, right? And because he's going technically first now, I personally would just go at an exchange because I don't want to put any floaters out. What about you? What are you thinking? Yeah, I think it's interesting from Hannah's perspective. I wonder if she, I mean, we've all experienced, you know, exchanging and keeping an E and drawing like five or six vowels or not being able to do anything, which can really slow you down in the early game. So I wonder if she was just trying to have something in case something comes down. I mean, F is pretty, uh, is a pretty usable tile in any situation. But moving over to James, yeah, he definitely is close to a couple bingos. So I think, honestly, it's possible to consider even exchanging here since your opponent just did and not leave something very floatable on the rack. He's going to play Ale, which I completely understand. It just scores a couple of points, um, but it does leave a lot of overlaps in every possible direction. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you know, he could have just, you know, maybe just exchanged one because he's just so close to something really good. Maybe just exchanged an A. I would have liked exchanging AE as well, just because I'd, I'm not really a huge fan of setting up my opponent to have any great floaters out. He did he did play short though, so that's good because you know he's not giving an extraneous amount of I would say floaters. So good. And Hannah spotted Flick, which you know is a good, decently scoring move. Uh, perhaps Ferric F E R R Eric hooking. Hooking an F onto the end of Aleph um, yeah. is a very clever play. Um, I believe that's, um, that's take the first flick letter back. in Arabic, Aleph. Also the first letter in Urdu, which is, yeah. Hmm. She's going to take it back, which I understand, and she's going to play Fiercer instead, which oh. is a strong play. It gets both the F and the C on a triple letter score, which is going to score 26 points for her. Um and keep the L, which I think is very reasonable. That's you may totally be, reasonable. She definitely is trying to explore the bag as much as she possibly can right now, hope to get some early leave. The board is so up in the air that, you know, playing off as many tiles as you can can be understandable in a position like this. I mean, I completely understand her wanting to keep this volatile. She's seen James play on stream. She's seen him play in, in person. I mean, if she wants to keep this board uh, open for herself strategically, give herself more chances. I say, you know, like do what makes you comfortable. There are definitely players out there who will pick keeping a board a relatively more open or relatively more closed in the, you know, like in the style of like Gibson, like David Gibson, a very famous player. 
Um, and there are some players who will just straight up try and play equity every single time, who will always just calculate what is the score that I get on the board and what is the score of the tiles, the remaining tiles that I have left on my rack. I think it's a strategic consideration. And in this case, if she feels like fiercer is something that is better for her, something that makes her like feel safer than playing something like flick, then go ahead, do it. I think that's definitely a good reading of the situation. Um, but moving over to James' rack, he has the Z and he has perfect tiles to support it. I mean, the E, the A, the D, the T, and the R are, all have their own set of words with the Z. Um, and right. he's going to have a lot of options. Unfortunately, none of them hit quite as hard as the Z can hit. Um, but he's going to score a nice 30, maybe a, on the high end of the 30s points with something like his Zed or Raised or Razid yeah. going next to Fiercer. Razid would have been cool. But you know, I like, yeah, I like Raised, I like Zed in that same spot. They're both great. But um, yeah, I mean, Zed, maybe Zed would have been better. I don't know. Zed keeping R-A-T-E is really strong. Yeah. Um, but I mean, E-T on its own is nothing to laugh at either. It's a very strong leave. So Raised That's definitely true. makes sense. You don't want to yeah. turn down four free points when they're there. That's also a consideration. I like I like Zed just a, a smidgen more because I just really like how strong that rack is. And now Hannah's got something that's so close, so close to a bingo. Like we were talking about the suffixes, the common ones, and having ing on your rack is it's like it's a little bit of a godsend, right? You see it and you're like, I could be so close to something. It's <laughs> probably easier to spot a bingo when you've got like a common suffix, but. Here, though, I think Hannah's going to have to do something uh, like, I don't know, like just diving maybe and grazed, you know? Yeah, raised takes a couple words in front of it. It takes the G, it takes the, the C. So any of those would score a lot. She's going to play valid instead, keeping I and G, which is very understandable. Funnily uh, enough, yeah. if she had played, if somehow Fiercer were played one tile over, she would have had deviling through the E in her own Ooh. word. But in that the current situation, cool. she's forced to just play valid. Oh, you mean like deviling an egg? Yeah, in, in Fiercer. Yeah, nice. I do like deviled eggs. They're, I mean, they're the, they're the <laughs> kind of like eggs where the yolk doesn't gross me out, where I'm like, okay, if it's deviled and it's spiced, I'm, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, same thing with like valid. I, I do think that, you know, maybe like, seeing being able to see that hook for raised is very helpful here but valid is valid is valid very valid and interesting thing about valid is it doesn't take an s it valid is not a word but it does seem like one of the types of adjectives that are common enough that somehow through some course of language adaptation it would become a word so i wonder if this is going to become something important oh my gosh um, i know for right? example like Oh, sorry. If, yeah, yeah, if James plays something near the bottom, um, Hannah might try to play hosting with valids, which isn't a valid word. Um, that's actually, I think, interesting for a couple reasons. One, because James would have the choice to challenge or not. And two, because hosting takes a G in front of it for ghosting, which yeah. opens up a whole new uh, potential for opportunities. And yeah, that's where you really got to think. Well, one, you got to think about, hey, is valid a word? And two, you're going to be like, what is the likelihood of my opponent drawing into a G? What are the chances of me having a G? Well, since he doesn't have one right now. Though I do think that James is likely to challenge the word valid. However, you can never tell. This is double challenge. And we have seen people get away with phonies on the board before. The double challenge where you have to be absolutely, absolutely sure of your knowledge can really, it can really uh, do a number on you. Mm -hmm. And Kip's gonna come down, which is James' best play. It scores very well and it leaves him with might or time on his rack, which is a lovely set of tiles to leave. Um, but it is yeah. going to give Hannah the opportunity to play either hosting in a few positions or the 98 point double double of histogen. Oh my God, that's insane. You know, if you're not oh, gonna just... if you're not gonna be able to uh, get histogen down, then hosting is it's very respectable. That is what eighty two points making grazed. It's a good spot of that hook, which means she probably saw it last time and didn't like feel like using it 
instead of keeping, you know, like that ING on the rack. And Definitely. she's, yeah, she's been able to cash in on it. So that's a great move. And James has drawn a strong set of tiles himself from Kip. He's drawn into three three very high probability bingos, Emirate, Meteor, and uh, Emerita. Um, yeah. Emirate will play on the very top for a lot of points, 89, right above hosting. Oh, because it overlaps with uh, the H, O, and S, making A, H, T, O, and E, S. Nice. But here's the thing, right? Look, so if he plays Emirates, right, he has to be so sure that he's not going to get hit with Emirates, with, you know, like, can I getting something like S, T, like a word going down Definitely. that triple. That would be a pain in the butt to deal with. Oh my gosh. Because that could score a lot of points. But um, this and is I love to scoring thing, though. Mm -hmm. And I love to see in the chat, we have fans for James shouting out uh, love and support, which is always fun to see. Um, these, and I mean, I'm these sure. players have friends and family who, who support them. And it's wonderful to see, especially with the youth scene, how much support and energy goes into bringing these players to be some of the best in the world. And yeah, I mean, I've seen James at a, like at least one or two like multi-day tournaments now, and it's been, he's really rising to the top. I mean, for somebody to come out of a completely different, um, whatchamacallit, uh, dictionary, which is the North American school Scrabble dictionary, to come to the the North American full lexicon, the one that's not as redacted. I mean, he's really showing his caliber over this lexicon, his ability to not just separate them, but to keep learning and to keep growing. That's amazing. And that's something that you've done too, Jeffrey. Like, how was that for you? The first time playing fart on the board in an adult tournament <laughs> felt like nothing else. I mean, the school Scrabble <laughs> Dictionary is very similar to the tournament dictionary that we're seeing before us in a lot of ways, other than certain words which they've determined to be naughty are not in there, <laughs> which includes some very strange words, like, for example, fart, which are you I'm to play sorry if I've like, got you. Um... I've got you quaking, oh but... Yeah, I mean, that was, I don't think you're allowed to say that on stream. <laughs> that is the F word, sir. Are you allowed to play <laughs> the fart word? Is the F word? You're not allowed to say that here. Um, what about something like, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, fart in the chat. Please, please do not fart in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> what about something like, were you allowed to play something like poop? Um, I think poop wasn't allowed. There's some interesting controversy because P is allowed, P-E-E, -E, because it's the type of letter, you know, the letter P, but you can't do oh. peed because that means that you're you're going to the bathroom, which, <laughs> which we don't want to hear about that, yeah. not our poor youthful ears. Okay, so this is a very high probability bingo, right? So we know for a fact that James wasn't sitting around being like, hey, what's the bingo in here? We know that James is taking the time to do that risk calculation again and be like, what word can I play that's not giving back too much? Because that Emirate play, th that's for 89 points. That's the highest scoring bingo that he has. But he's definitely got to be scared of any lurking S's, any lurking blanks. And there's two out. And there's like three. Yeah, there's three S's out. He, he definitely wanted to play that Meteor play for like, how many, like, 22 fewer points not to give back to his opponent now i don't necessarily agree with this what about you what do you think yeah i think it's interesting because even if you didn't want to necessarily leave open the opportunity that s coming down for a lot of points there are some other possibilities that i think i would have considered first like emerite which is the plural of emerita one of the bingos that he definitely had seen on his rack yeah. And even Meteor is an interesting play in itself because it leaves open some very strong overlaps with um, that triple letter next to the A. Yeah. But so, Han is going to come down with Quota for a lot of points, which I think is a strong play to use her blank in order to get rid of that Q. I do think that there are some other places on the board that might be worth considering. For example, she had QAID in the top right. Oh, that's dangerous. It if is. He However, had, yeah, if James had an eye. Sorry, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think a quota is definitely a strong play to score a lot of points in this point in the game. 
what do you think about just cat, you know, like making A-H, T-O, and then putting that Q on that double over there and taking away that threat of at least a triple on uh, the left side? What do you think about that? Huh, I think it's definitely worth considering. I mean, all, it's always difficult to value the blank at this point in the game because you can think, oh, if I just play the blank now, score 50 points, I'll, be, I'll have a quick lead, and then it's just a matter of who draws the other blank. Um, right. And it's often hard to calculate when it's worth it to save it and not when you could when you have such high scoring plays open to you. Absolutely. So we've seen James put Jibba on his rack, just shuffle that around a few times, and he may be considering the uh, back hook to AH, maybe considering making Aha and Jibba for mm. uh, thir 32 points. And <laughs> that's, you know, that's a good play. It's kind of, it's never happy. It's never a happy moment when you keep that V on your rack, but your J and your V, like they're not gonna jive well together <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you might you know if you're gonna if you're gonna be able to keep your b off your rack your u off your rack you're just gonna be able to send them out to the world to be a problem for your opponent i'd say that's a good move as any mm -hmm. now i have a possibility for you which is a six letter word which is it's not very common so i would understand if um, the players hadn't heard of it. I hadn't heard of it, but there's the possibility of Verjuice, V-E-R-J-U-S, through the E in Fiercer for 32. Oh my gosh. Why is that a word? Why is that a <laughs> word? I hate that. Okay, first of all, one, had no idea that was a word. Second of all, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, people are not necessarily studying their six-letter words because they're so rarely played. I'm too exactly. chicken to play Verjuice, I think, just because... One, it's not wow. gonna score. Oh, oh, look at that! Oh, she sees Rousable immediately. Good for her. Hannah spotted uh, one of her highest scoring bingos. It was either Rousable or Rubiola's in the same position. Rousable's gonna come down for seventy four points, which is a very nice play and is gonna push her into the lead. Beautiful! Oh my gosh, she's already down with two. She's got what two bingos now? And yeah, yeah. James is he's well. He's looking at a few clunky tiles, but he's going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. So from James's position right now, he he's pretty close to a bingo. He just needs to get rid of that V, F, and probably one of his R's. Um, and he has the very high scoring possibility of playing F, R, O, E right next to Meteor down onto that triple, which would score 44 points and put him right back into the running. Ooh, nice. What about what about afros in that same spot and keeping like R E V instead? So making um, T A I F E R and then making afros down. I think it's a very smart play, and it might even be better than the possibility of playing fro because the S really isn't doing much for you on this board. You can't add the S to meteor. You can't add the S to rousable. It really isn't going to be doing much for you other than possibly making it so that you're looking for a six letter word rather than a seven. So yeah. burning that S for an extra five points and keeping the E on your rack with that R, it's definitely worth considering. Oh, wait, you know what? Sidem in the uh, in the chat just pointed out that arousable is valid. So maybe keep so maybe keeping that A is a good idea and playing fro like you suggested, because that's that's a hook that you're going to have for another time. That's, That's definitely true. And if yeah. you can see that, I mean, putting the A there on its own, if you can get a little tile going the other direction, is going to score you an easy 20 points by itself. And if you can get perhaps something that, like if he draws the T there and he can play Tav, it's going to score very nicely. Oh, um, yeah, beautiful. But Fro is going to come oh, down for 44. Nice. Um, I like keeping that. a nice set of tiles on this rack. And you know, as long as you've got that S, that R, that A to go with your V, I think it's it's uh, like it's a good leave to have. It's not like you're putting yourself in any jeopardy immediately. The V is scary, yes, but it's also manageable, especially for somebody like James, who's got an insane word knowledge. Mm -hmm. And keeping the S and the A and the R is definitely going to help with that. Yeah. So Hannah's had hid squared away to the side of her rack for a bit now. 
And I'm wondering, is she thinking of hooking like the A in Meteor to like H? Oh, yeah, there we go. And that is actually just giving her even more points now that James has played Fro. So kudos to her. Yes. Scoring nearly 40 points as a comeback to Fro, which was on its own 44 points. So she's really keeping her lead and trying to run away with this. Yeah, I mean, you like you know they really started out neck and neck. They're still neck and neck. It's it's an intense matchup, and I really think that this can go either way. It just depends on the really with each of them. I think it really just depends on the next draw. Mm -hmm. And James has drawn O X Y onto his vars, which isn't necessarily what you want to see if you're looking for a bingo, but it's really uh, nice given this position because he can play O X Y onto the triple um, oxy. One of the few hooks onto Ox. Wow. He's Here's separated the thing, off to the side. Yeah, I mean, like, Hannah doesn't want him to play that at all because she's got Yoni on her rack. She's got Y-O-N-I. Well, she had for a bit, and that would have been uh, a great underlap there as well, making B-Y, L-O, and E-N. Now, Yoni there would also have scored a lot if Oxy doesn't come down right now. And I really wonder what's going through James's head right now. He definitely has a bunch of different possibilities. I'm sure he's just looking for to make sure he isn't missing something. That's yeah. I mean, that's definitely a good idea because there's, I believe, there's more spots for the X on the board. Like you could just play Oxy making B Y. That might be you know like something that you spot first, or like A X and A T and X I on the top triple. But yeah, you know, he's got, he's seen it. And he's got it down. So very smart move. And that's going to put play. him once again right back into the running. These players are really shooting back and forth with some very high scoring plays. Oh my gosh, you know what? You know where Hannah just played Tony? That's exactly where Yoni could have gone too. Wow. Okay, so huh. she had two spots for that. Yeah, and that's it's going to awesome. score a nice set of points. 41 points right there. Um, yeah. Same points as Yoni would have scored there, and it's you know it's a better leave. Love it. I love that for her. That was that's a really good spot. I mean, I was so I was so like tunnel vision to the lower part of the board because I was like, oh, that's where everybody's playing right now. I completely forgot about like the top quadrant, and that's that can that can really be something that happens to you in a tournament. Sometimes you just like forget to look at the different parts of the board. Definitely, I do at least. <laughs> And but Amy in the chat like, saying, oh, sorry. So I'm just saying, Hannah's board vision this game has seemed to always been completely on point. She sees exactly where her plays can go. Things like quota and hosting on top of Grays and Tony are all showing that she's looking at the board exactly where it matters and finding those crucial plays. Exactly. She's got, like, she's, she's got some eagle-eyed vision. Like, this is a woman who has been playing for a while. There's a reason why her rating has been shooting up and up and up. She's really been putting in the work. And I think like this is like this is such a great game to be watching. Like they're absolutely neck and neck, but Hannah just keeps inching up ahead and ahead. And so, like going back to Amy in the chat who said, I thought I was good at Scrabble until I started watching this channel. Now I see I'm just average. These players are on another level. Amy, we are so lucky to be watching some of the best of the players in North America competing and having their games be streamed on this channel. I think like it's such a great resource to be able to go through these VODs, to be able to go through these videos and see not just these players find amazing words, but also the experts showing you why it's so doable, how to get there, and how you can just be, you know, like a like a killer on the board. Doesn't matter if you're playing living room Scrabble, doesn't matter if you're playing tournament Scrabble. I really think that if you're gonna try and learn and try and like get better and you know, if this is a game that really brings you joy, then this is a channel to be at. Yeah, and these players are really making a master class of what the highest level of Scrabble looks like. And it looks like James is going to exchange VUU, which is definitely understandable. I think it's worth considering trying to open up a nice spot for your S with something like Virtue or Erev on the bottom right, but I think exchanging VU Ooh. is definitely not a mistake. What about just like, just VA, like V-A-U through the A in like, browsable? I mean, it's not a lot of points, but something. Definitely, but I mean, 
Hannah once again finding her top play in a very clever set of overlaps. I wonder if she knows that G takes that N hook for Jian. Um, maybe she's trying to set herself up, or maybe she just thinks the N oh. does better on her rack. But 26 points yeah. is going to put her nicely into the lead, especially now that James is exchanging. It's going to close off that T onto the triple as well, which is something she definitely wants to do. I definitely would have liked to see her play like G with like the N or G ing the the verb, but G for like for how it sets her up for another turn, I think is a good good play. I mean, uh, she can yeah she she'd have to hope that James doesn't have any high scoring plays there, and I don't know what he would play there anyway if he had something because uh, it's I mean it's not like he's gonna get maybe the greatest amount of points there so. Feels mm -hmm. yeah, feels like if you're not, maybe if you don't know the hook or if you're not or if you're setting that up for yourself for the next turn, maybe not too bad. Get him on the points. Definitely, um, and I think it's interesting looking over at James right now because if you look at the times between these two players, Hannah has 18 minutes and James is down to six minutes and 55 seconds. As long as I've known him, James has always been an incredibly quick player. So I, won I wonder if this uh, new strategy of taking his time and calculating it out, how it's been working out for him recently. Yeah, oh, especially wait. if he's going to play a phony. Wow. Yes, which we know valid is not valid. He's oh played gosh, two it's... phonies at once, WAPS and valids, both of which aren't good. Oh my god. Yikes. Here's the question, though. Is it going to get challenged at all? It doesn't look like it. I, I don't think that Hannah has called for a hold, which means it's probably going to stay on the board. Yeah, and he's mixed the tiles in with his rag. So, ooh. Um, so we're moving back over to Hannah. And it's an interesting it's play by James. I wonder if he knows that these aren't valid words. I'm sorry, WAPS is valid, but VALIDS is not valid. VALIDS is not valid. Yeah. Uh, That's interesting. I mean, at this point, he's like probably guessing. I'm guessing. But... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a big risk to take, you know? Definitely. All um, right. And moving over, um, Hannah has played Etic, which is nice, but what I don't like about it is it keeps WU on her rack, which is famously one of the worst two possible tiles to keep in conjunction with each other. Oh, God. While she, is, while she is comfortably ahead, it is scary to think about. I, yeah, I mean, when I'm in this, when I, if, if I were in this position, I'd be like, I have no idea what to do. Do you just play off your W somewhere? Just this, I don't even know. But, you know, she feels like she's getting enough points and it's, you know, she wants to be comfortable in the lead. Perhaps it's not the worst idea, but equity wise or like by strategy wise, I really don't know if. That's something I would recommend. But it does seem to have worked out for her. I will say it does seem to have worked out for her. And she, yeah, I mean, she's not going to get hit back by a bingo or anything. She's she's in comfortable shape right now. Mm -hmm. um, and looking over at James Rack, he really needs to start trying to find a way to bingo. And at this point in the game, he really needs to start looking for lanes where he can play them down. It's lovely right. to see in chat that James has brought both friends and family who've never been introduced to the scene before. So we'll, we can explain in more detail exactly what's going through his head. So he has strong tiles on his rack. These definitely can score well. But one thing that he's lacking is a place to play all seven of his tiles at once. Often you want to either overlap or play through a tile. But if you look, there's no real clear areas to do that. The closest he could possibly get is something maybe next to FE and ID. Um, but this is exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to pop down tiles in order to open up the board. And it's going to be, and it is getting harder and harder to do anything on this board because, as you can see, the places where you can even put down seven tiles in a row are just disappearing. You're not going to be able to 
place tiles uh, much of anywhere very soon. In fact, I mean, I don't really know where a seven letter word would fit on this board right now. It's just, it's just tough. So if he's, if he's thinking, hey, you know, like, let me play Demets and let me get the points. Let me try and catch up. Let me be within shooting range so I don't have to depend on a bingo. Then maybe that's not a terrible strategy while he's looking at, you know, like the tile pool and like what's available because he's still got, say, for example, that blank to shoot for. So if he's thinking, hey, let me put down a crap ton of tiles and maybe draw into that, that blank. Sure. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's worth the, the risk. Now, I want to ask your opinion on using that S there, because Demit seemed like a very strong play to score a lot of points, but the S closes down that left lane that he seemed to be opening for himself. True, 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 true. Oh, that's a good question. I wonder, I think you're absolutely right. Maybe keeping that S is a good idea. Maybe, because, I mean, you're still using five tiles. You're still, like, using a good number of tiles to try and hit that blank. And when you do play that S, you are absolutely blocking that lane. You might be right. You might be absolutely right. He should not be playing that S. Wow. That's, wow, that's what... great insight. That's great insight. Holy shit. <laughs> so right now, he didn't draw the best tiles after playing Demits, but he is going to find his best play, which is a very strange word of Repung, or maybe Repune. Um, <laughs> Uh, repugnant, so repugnant, repugnant. I, I, I think it's <laughs> I don't know. Repugn for eighteen points, which is what the, the computer says is the best possible play. It's a very strange word, though, putting the G and N like that without an I before it. Um, maybe at this point he's even trying to catch Hannah out on a challenge, which this was a favorite oh. strategy of mine back in the day, and I know James has used it as well of playing weird words in order to draw out at least just a raised eyebrow, you know, something to slow your opponent down. Yeah. Um, and you know, it would have been nice, an S to hook to the repeal. But or I mean, hindsight even just a like, blank. Even just, just a blank, blank, which Hannah has on her rack. Though he did play five tiles again. So he is, you know, he is not just clearing out his rack, but he's also, for him, you know, because he doesn't know that Hannah's got that blank, he's still trying to get to that blank that is invisible to him, that is that may still be in the bag for him. It's probably one of the only ways he's got to win right now, unless Hannah either makes oh, an invalid word or she uh, discontinues scoring so steadily. And I don't know if there's a chance of that happening. I mean, Hannah has exhibited time and time again her word knowledge. She's exhibited like her ability to find great plays and to put something on the board that is going to give her the, the greatest chance of winning this. Mm -hmm. And in fact... With Repune, that emptied the bag. So James now knows for a fact exactly what Hannah's rack is, and Hannah knows exactly what James's rack is. So both of right. them are running through their minds, going crazy, trying to see if there's any possible play that their opponent can have that might swing the game in one direction or another. The exactly. other benefit of this, however, is that Hannah can now be happy to use her blank without hesitation because she knows there's no bingo coming up that she can wait for. So something like a Vulse or even just Navels next to Repune will easily Ooh. close down the area of the board and score a lot of points. Or something like Navy, which N-A-E-V-I, which I think is a strange plural for some other word, um, would score 36 points. But Values is going to come down and score just as yeah. well with 33 points. I believe that's like 33 points. Yeah, that's still a really good play. And you know what? She knows that she has this in the bag. This is the third, can you believe this is the third game that we've seen in a row where the opponent has emptied out the bag so that there's exactly seven tiles on each person's um, rack? This is the third time. And it's, usually, it's you know, insane. Yeah, we don't usually see that happen. Usually we see these players leave, say, one tile in the bag, three tiles in the bag, something so that the other person can't um, bingo and then leave the value of the tiles left over just to be added to that bingo score. So who knows? Exactly. Um, but now it is the end game, so James is probably just going to look for his highest possible set of plays that can go out. He knows his opponent has the N, just an N, so it's going to be pretty hard to stop Hannah from ending the game at the next turn. So really what's going on in James' mind is what your classic living room player is trying to do, which is just find the highest scoring play no matter what the cost is. Absolutely. And, you know, he could 
possibly i mean obviously he has no win here he's also starting uh, to run low on time so what he's gonna want to do is just find the high scoring play and just get that out of the way maybe um what do you think about something like roto making p o u t and g o that's at um what is this on next Ro underneath repune yeah yeah underneath repune yes if i could say that I word i would <laughs> I think that's probably his best play. It seems to score the highest of anything available while getting rid of as many tiles as possible. So he has a couple of options that can go in exactly that spot. He has Roto, Reno, Rato, all of which I'm sure he knows. But I mean, at this point, I'm sure he's just looking to see if there's anything else, perhaps even going for extreme plays, like something through the uni, like an Ionanate or something. Ooh, that would be insane. Wait, what about, wait, actually, I don't know if this is valid in NWL. What about zone from like the Z? Because somebody said enter zone in the chat and I was like, wait, hang on. The Z is still usable, um, right? Alas, we don't have the I'd word, not without an S. Really? Oh, I feel like that's such a common, I don't know. It feels like a <laughs> common word to me. Okay, I don't know. I just... I'm sorry, I was born and bred into Collins, so I have a familiarity with it that is not, you know, that's, that I don't have with NWO. So sometimes I'll be like, wait, Definitely. excuse me, hello. It's, so. it's always fun to, to see a word. I mean, once you've been playing Scrabble for so many years, it just, it becomes a part of you. It's, it's in the deepest layers of your mind that you're always able to see what words are good and what words aren't. And they just don't look real when they aren't real words. Oh my gosh. Isn't that like insane when somebody like can play both Collins and NWL too? Mm -hmm. it, mean, it blows my mind. I know. You um, keep that clear in your head. Rato is going to come down and Hannah is going to finish this out by dropping her N underneath Kin. Well, she could have played Unjog. She could have. That would be really funny. Unjog is... Well, she did. Funny. Yeah, she did pop that down for a second, and then she laughed, and she moved it to Kin. She's like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but I love that sense of humor. And kudos to her for just absolutely smashing this game. Wow, that became quite a runaway. Just beautifully, beautifully done. So lovely. Very well played. And you can see that this board vision was so crucial. I mean, I believe that James has has an incredible word knowledge but hannah has been playing for a longer amount of time and she definitely has some experience which helped her win out in this game i mean yeah like her reading has absolutely had a meteoric rise i mean she's uh as we know from the comments now thank you tracy she's a stand-up comedian i think she recently won wow a, uh, yeah like a like a comedian, like a stand-up uh, comedy. I think, I don't know, there was like a competition. I mean, she's really good at everything that she touches. She's got like all these TikToks. This girl is like, she's killer. 